Hey guys, it's Kevin, another movie for you guys, and this movie we'll be reviewing is that I don't know why it took me so long to watch, but I figured that since it is the month of October, what I decided to do is the remaining horror movies that I haven't reviewed, that I've heard really good things about, I'm going to review in October, and I got a few more, but this is a movie that I've really wanted to see, and I've had on Blu-ray literally since September, and I've had so many weeks to watch it, and for some reason, I just haven't watched it, but finally, I said, all right, I'm gonna sit down, I'm finally gonna watch it, and finally, I did, and that movie is none other than the sequel to The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2. I was really looking forward to this movie, as you guys know. I remember I was gonna see it in theaters, I didn't get the chance to, but I was so excited for this movie, mainly because I love The Conjuring. I think The Conjuring is one of the scariest films of the decade, honestly. I think it is knows how to be scary, but it also had really well-rounded characters, and overall just a really memorable, scary film that I still really do love, and I think The Conjuring 2, I was really excited about, but at the same time, I was a little bit worried, and it's mainly because of two things. One, Annabelle. I heard that movie sucked. I heard that movie was completely the opposite of what they wanted The Conjuring to be, and also the fact that James Wan hadn't done a horror movie in a while. I was a little bit worried about that, other than that, though, I was pretty much completely on board this movie. That trailer, ever since that first trailer came out, it completely sold me. And I have to say that not only did The Conjuring 2 live up to my expectations, I honestly think The Conjuring 2 might actually be better than the original Conjuring. There's so much more going on in this movie. There's so much more to love about it, and... Let me just get right into it. The plot of this movie is very simple, but it's also not simple. Basically, in a nutshell, the plot of this movie is, again, we have Ed and Lorraine Warren. They have just gone through the Amityville horror case, which is something that is deeply haunting Lorraine, and, you know, she's getting these visions of uh, this nun and everything. We don't really know what's up about that. But they get a call that there is basically a London version of the Amityville horror going on called the... Enfield Poltergeist, uh, and uh, basically they have to go help this girl, uh, Janet, and her family, who she might possibly be possessed, and they'd figure out what's actually going on, while also trying to subsequently deal with the damage of what their previous cases have done to them, and that basically is the plot of The Conjuring 2 overall. Really good plot, but let's just get into this movie, starting off with the performances. Now, one of the reasons I really did love uh, The First Conjuring is because of the acting. I think the acting in the first movie was great. I think the performances are definitely something that stuck with me and really resonated in my mind. It's one of the best things about the movie. That is absolutely the case with this movie. I actually think the acting is better in this movie. Let's first talk about Vera Farmiga in this movie, who I think was even better than she was in the first one. I think she was very good in the first movie, don't get me wrong, but this is the movie where I feel she had a lot more to do. Like I said, a lot of this movie, she's being haunted by by um, this nun, and we don't really know what's up with that, but she is very terrified of what's happened to them in their previous cases, and her fear really does uh, carry a lot of this film, and it, I think it evokes a lot of it, and I think she overall did just a really good job here, but she's not crazy, and they did a really good job with doing that. They could have made her go insane and have all these crazy things happening to her, but no, she's not crazy. She's just very paranoid. You know, this is her job, but it's really starting to mess with her. You can definitely tell. It started messing with her mind. She doesn't really know what's up, but at the same time, she is still that Lorraine Warren that we know from the first one. I like that they did that. I thought overall she was a really great character here. I really love what she did in this movie, and I thought overall she just felt very real, as well as Patrick Wilson. I thought he overall was a really great character. They give him a bit more stuff to do in this movie. Like, we definitely get to see more of their home life and the way things are between them, and so much of this movie is made up of their marriage. Actually, a huge part of this movie is about their marriage, and how much these two depend on each other, and how much they trust each other, and really how this is a partnership in every single way, and there really isn't any other way to categorize it. It is, in fact, a partnership through and through, and how they basically need each other to survive, and I think they showed that very well here. Their bond is by far one of the strongest things about this movie. I love what they did with them as characters. I thought they were fantastic, and you really do feel like they're real, because they were real people. I mean, the Warrens are, in fact, everyone in this movie is, in fact, a real person. The Warrens were, in fact, real people, and you definitely get that realism from them. It's a very realistic plot, and I think they did a really good job with them overall, and they definitely, like I said, as good as they were in the first movie, I thought they were really good. This movie just focuses that much more on them, and it makes it that more memorable. 
Now, as good as Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson are, because I do think that they're really great in this movie, I honestly don't think that they're the best performance in this movie. The best performance in this movie for me is none other than Madison Wolf as Janet. This is the girl that is possibly possessed, and we don't really know what's going on with her, but she was incredible in this movie. She's only, I believe, 14 years old, and she absolutely killed it in this role. So many horror movies now, we're seeing young child actors, and I'm really impressed by it. I think they really are doing a great job, and I've never seen Madison Wolf and anything else before, but she absolutely killed it in this movie, and it's mainly because the way they develop her as a character. This is someone who very much fends for her siblings. She's someone who literally will beat anyone up. I mean, she's very tough. She's very um, grounded, though, too. You know, she's tough, but she's also learning, but she's very grounded. I really do like about her character, but something else that's great about her is that we actually don't know if she's possessed throughout the whole movie. You, we don't really know if she is possessed or if she is joking around. They did that pretty well throughout the whole movie. The fear in her is really good, and when she has those creepy scenes, you definitely do feel right with her, and I really did like what she had to do. I thought overall she gave a very good performance, and like I said, by far, I think she was the best part about this movie. She was just so creepy, and especially the scenes between her and Lorraine, there's actually a lot of bonding between them. There's this great scene where Lorraine goes to her on a swing. You might have seen in the trailer, and in the trailer, it may seem like it was creepy, but it actually wasn't. There's actually something really sweet about their relationship, and why Lorraine feels for Jay Janet so much and how common these two really are I think overall was actually really sweet and it really got us to care about this character even more than they did in the first one and I really did love uh, what they did with her overall she really was great and then the rest of the family I thought was also really great here. Frances O'Connor especially really stuck with me. This is a mother that is trying to provide for her family. She's all in on her own. You know, she's got four kids to raise. We don't really know what happened to the father, but she's got four kids to raise, and, you know, they're middle class. They don't have a ton of money, and, you know, it's the 70s, so it wasn't the greatest time in England and things like that. And I thought overall she was really great in this movie. You can tell she really just wants to save them. She doesn't really know what's going on. You know, she's kind of the one left in the dark throughout most of the movie, but she's also the one you feel for the most because you want her to be okay you want things to go well for her but you also see how how much harder she has to survive and I think overall she was really great here I think the cast in general this is one of the best casts I've seen in any horror movie this year I think everyone really did do a great job and definitely the bond between these actors were just a lot stronger I love what they did with them and overall like I said one of the best casts I've seen all year but as good as the cast is, that's not really the thing that I want to talk about in this movie, because I think the acting really is great, and I think you guys expect me to say, oh, Vera Farmiga's great, oh, Patrick Wilson's great, I mean, no shit, they're great, they're really good actors and really good actresses, that's just, that's nothing new, you guys have expected me to say that. What I do want to talk about, though, is the directing and the screenplay, which, let's talk about the directing Thank God James Wan came back for this movie. Just thank God he did, because the man knows how to direct horror. He really does. But what he does even better in this movie is the way he directs it. Yes, it's a horror film, but it's not exactly just a horror film. I really wouldn't categorize it that way. It's also a biopic of Lorraine and Ed Warren, and they did that really well here. You know, we have to keep in mind that these are real characters, so there's not too much new stuff that James Wan can do with them. And if I'm not mistaken, Ed and Lorraine Warren do approve most of these movies, like when he makes The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, and Lorraine Warren do basically tell him, you know, what was real and what was, you know, what's factual and what's actually just bullshit that he made up, and I like that there's not a ton of that. Everything in this movie feels very real, and he directed it very well, but when it needs to be creepy, damn is it creepy. I mean, this movie might actually be creepier than the first one, and that's mainly because of how much more it gets into the psyche of Lorraine Warren and also of the character of Janet. These are two characters that throughout the whole movie we're fearing for we don't know what's going to happen to them and I think they did just a really good job with that and yes that scene from the trailer is just as scary as it was in the in the trailer I thought they did a really good job with that did they top the light bulb scene? I mean there's not exactly a light bulb scene in here but there's many different kinds of scary scenes and I think it did that really well. I definitely was very creeped out, and I really was very happy with the way that uh, the movie was crafted. Definitely just a really good way to uh, evoke fear. But the movie also, again, James Wan, something I love he does, he doesn't really do jump scares. He does jump scares in the sense that they're not false. These are real jump scares. There's something always at stake. There's always something that comes in play with the jump scares. There's no someone, you know, there's no, like, bird flying through the window. There's no someone joking around about it. These are legit jump scares, and you definitely do feel 
you know, feel for these characters. That's something they did pretty well, is that it's a very emotional movie. I mean, a big part of this movie is just how much this, you know, case affects all of these characters, especially of Ed and Lorraine Warren. I mean, Lorraine makes this promise to Ed, you know, she very reluctantly wants to take this case. You see in the beginning of the movie, she really doesn't want to take this case because she's already freaking out. I mean, their daughter's seeing weird things, she's seeing weird things, she doesn't really know what's going on, and I think overall that was very well done. I think it just added to the movie overall, knowing that these characters are already so scared and are already seeing these crazy things. It just makes it that much more scarier when these demons start to come out, and they did a really good job with that overall. I really did love uh, the screenplay in this movie. And I think as well, something else the movie does very well is... It shows these characters um, kind of looking like fools to the rest of the world. I mean, after the events of the first movie, everyone thinks that Ed and Lorraine Warren are crazy. They think that there's no such thing as demons. They think that they're complete, uh, you know, they, they think that they're hoaxes. They think that they're frauds. And I think that was a very interesting part of the movie. Yes, it's something we've seen before, but again, it actually happened. And I think they did that very well here. I really did enjoy that. And the screenplay in general, it is scary, like I said, but it just has this really great sense of character. And it's very well crafted and it was very well realized how to develop character from the scares and they did that so so well in this movie and honestly I'm not gonna lie my favorite scenes in this movie are actually not the scares I think there are some great horror scenes in this movie that are very scary but my favorite scenes in this movie are actually some of the smaller character moments in which we get to see these characters talk about their past or get more in depth with things that have happened to them and I think they did that even more than they did in the first movie I remember the first movie focusing a lot on the uh you know the the scares and and the demon, and you know, what's exactly happening to them. This movie focuses a lot more on the characters, I think that's why this movie is just, for me, more memorable overall than the first one was. I really do love the first one, but this one's just ten times better. And like I said, one of the major points of this movie that it's trying to make is about marriage and how they need to stick together. But it's not just about that. It's also about the family who is very codependent on one another. Like I said, this is a mother that raises four kids. And there is this brilliant scene where uh, Ed is telling the kids, you know, basically trying to explain to them what's going on with the demon and how they have to protect each other. And again, it didn't come across as creepy or weird. It came across as really sweet, and these characters really do understand each other. They're actually going through very similar circumstances. The way they would coincide what was going on Ed and Lorraine's uh, life, and then co you know uh, with and then you know coincide that with what was going on with the family. I thought overall was really interesting. It did in this really cool way that I think could have come off as really contrived, but because you cared so much for these characters, you really didn't care that they might have had very similar stories. Overall, it made a lot more sense. And again, because these are real characters, I was okay with them having. Very very similar stories, and especially this gets, like I said, Ed and Lorraine to end up, you know, revealing some stuff about their childhood I don't think we knew from the first movie, and makes us like their characters just even a little bit more than we did than the than we did in the first movie. The cinematography here is amazing, honestly. The cinematography here is so great. I think it is so creepy. I mean, just looking at that nun thing that Lorraine is seeing, I mean, it's so creepy. I don't, and I know they're making a spin-off of that. I completely understand why. Very creepy, and that totally is the Annabelle of this movie. I mean, it just really does not get creepier than that. But there's not, but even some of the possession scenes, I was so creeped out, and it's very darkly lit, but it's not darkly lit to the point where you can't tell what's going on. You're just very scared, and sometimes you feel like you're right there with them, just over all the cinematography they did such a great job with evoking fear and showing these images and nothing felt fake everything felt like it could actually happen they did that really well here the score is so creepy i thought you definitely got that harrowing thrilling sense from the score they did a really good job with that and the editing this movie i honestly really do want to give uh, props to the editing because the movie's 134 minutes long you expect you think the way it's going to go oh we're going to you know have 20 minutes with this family and then they're going to be pulled in no it actually takes an hour and i'm not even joking an hour for for the Lorraines to actually get, you know, for not Lorraine, for the Warrens to actually get to the family. And I thought that was really well done the way they did that because we need to get into the Warrens, you know, we need to catch up with them, but at the same time, we need to get used to this family and get to their story. And it just really shows how much more focused this movie is on character and how less focused it is on scares. I wouldn't say it's not focused on scares, it's just a little bit less focused on that because it's trying to be more of a character driven story. And it definitely, you see that from the movie. They did that really, really well, and definitely something I will compliment the movie for. 
And let me just say right now, the climax of this movie is truly epic. I mean, yes, Ed and Lorraine Warren are real people, but you do feel it for them. You're honestly terrified during this climax that things might not go well in the way they do, and I really was getting worried of what was going to happen, even though they're still out there. And the way the movie does that makes you forget that these are real people and makes you feel look at them as characters. It's just so well done. It shows how grounded this movie is on character and how well focus does on that, and I think they did that really well, but also the twists in this movie, I definitely didn't see coming, I thought was overall really well done, and really added the suspense to the movie overall, and really did work in that regard. And I honestly was really surprised with how much time the movie spent with the Hodgdons. I expected to maybe be maybe a third of the film, but no, I think they have almost just as much screen time as the Warrens do. And I think it just really made the movie that much more intimate. The first one, yes, we had a lot of time with like Lillian Taylor's character and people like that. But I don't really remember their characters. I find them to be, you know, a regular family. This family I just found to be a lot more interesting going through a much more unique type circumstance. And you just fear, feel a lot more for them because we have so much time with them. Like I said, we almost a third, not a third of this movie, like half of this movie is devoted to them. I think they made it that much better. You know, we already know a lot about Ed and Lorraine, which we find out more about them in this movie. But by spending more time with the family, it makes us like them just as much. And that's really one of the many things that impress me so much this movie and why in my opinion it's it's even better than the first one overall guys the conjuring 2 is one of the most well realized horror sequels i've seen in some time that honestly at points doesn't feel like a horror movie and like i said is much more focused on character and in some regards might actually be better than the first one and in my mind i definitely am going to remember it more than the first one i will go back and watch the first one but just something about this movie i felt more connected to i felt more compelled with the characters and I found the story just overall so much more interesting. And I am definitely going to give The Conjuring 2 a 4.8 out of 5 or an A. The only reason I didn't go all the way is because I do think a few scenes in the beginning are just a little bit slow. But they were just a little bit slow. I think overall this movie is a lot better. It's even better than the first one. i probably give the first... If I had to rate the first one, I'd give it a B plus. I'll say that right now. I'd probably give it a B plus. But this movie is actually better than the first one. I think it has some of the most well-realized, some of the most creepiest moments, and overall some of... Of just the best moments I've seen in any movie this year. Conjuring 2 is a fantastic movie you guys haven't seen. Definitely check it out. It is the perfect blend of horror and drama and romance as well. It is all those different things and overall just makes one great horror sequel that is one of the best I've seen in a while and definitely is something that I really did impress me overall. But over guys, my read The Conjuring 2. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Have seen it, love your thoughts on it. Which do you like more, The Conjuring or The Conjuring 2? Uh, what do you think of this movie? Are looking forward if there's going to be a Conjuring 3? I am hearing there could be a Conjuring 3. And honestly, I'd be all for it. There's so many more stories of the Warren Files. I mean, there's so many cases they can do. And literally, they could just pick a case and do it. But we'll have to see. Uh, but that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next video, guys. My next video will finally be for the highly anticipated season premiere of The Walking Dead. We're finally going to find out who gets loose sealed and that's going to be a very sad review guys but we'll have to see maybe it'll be a sad review i'm expecting it to be and we'll see you guys for that okay bye